So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining us. Thank you for taking time out today to join the Intro to Workflow Formulas Salesforce Admins webinar. It's going to be a fun half hour, I promise you. Uh, so I want to get us started and introduce our speakers. I am so happy to be joined today with the newly minted solution architect for Gear CRM, Melissa Van Dyke. You can follow her on Twitter, at MVDSSDC. My name is Mike Gerhold. I am the manager of admin evangelism. You can follow me on Twitter, at Mike Gerhold. Um, it's going to be great. I'm so excited to have Melissa talk about everything from workflows, processes, and automation, and formulas. We're going to learn a lot. But of course, before we do that, it wouldn't be a Salesforce webinar without a forward-looking statement slide. So, just to remind you, we are a publicly traded company, so please make all of your purchasing decisions based on current features and functionality and not on any of the functionality that we may or may not discuss during this webinar. We do, however, want you to talk about being on the webinar and be social with us. So we are on Twitter, at Salesforce Admins, no I, because there's no I in admin. And you can connect with other awesome admins by using hashtag awesomeadmin. If you're on Facebook, you can like our page at Salesforce Admins. And of course, we're on YouTube where we have a lot of really cool videos and more to come to search for Salesforce Admins, which reminds me that YouTube has a lot of cool videos and this webinar will be recorded and turned into a really cool video. And so, before you ask the question, will this webinar be recorded? Yes, absolutely, it will be recorded and posted to YouTube. So, I mentioned questions, and I want to make sure that you have ample opportunities to ask questions, and we have an opportunity to answer them. So, you can join our admin webinar group for Q&A. You can do that quickly and easily by going to bit.ly backslash admin webinar group. Or if you're logged into the Salesforce Success Community, click on the Collaboration tab and join the group Salesforce Admin Webinar. You don't have to wait to the very end to ask your questions. We do have people standing by who can begin answering them immediately. But of course, do stick around for the end of the webinar where we will have live Q&A with Melissa uh, to ask questions, answer questions, and we can tackle even more. And of course, posting in the group gives us the ability to follow up with you after the webinar has concluded. So with that being said, we've got all the legal stuff out of the way, all the social stuff out of the way. Melissa, why don't you take us through the agenda and get us started? Okay, thanks, Mike. Hi, everyone. So we have a really jam-packed agenda today. We're going to be talking all about process automation. We're going to even write some formulas, and then we will have a demo with our very own Mike Gerhold. And then we'll go over resources and Q&A, as mentioned. So without further ado, a great way to think about process automation is as a if-then statement. So for example, if it's raining, then open an umbrella. So we have our little friend here, Squirrel, so if we were to automate his process of needing an umbrella when it rains, we would call that process automation. So let's break it uh, down a little bit more because what does an if-then statement really mean? And don't confuse this with the formula portion yet. What we're talking here is process automation, and process automation requires you to, uh, to decide what your criteria is and define that which is the if, so if something happens, if it's raining, then when that is true, what needs to happen? And as you know in workflow process builder, um, approval processes, we have those actions that happen when criteria is true. So your action is the then part of an if-then statement in process automation. Criteria, if it's raining, action, we automatically open an umbrella for our squirrel. Okay? So, what do we need to do? What are the three? We have three components that make up process automation in the world of Salesforce. And those components are defining our objects. So are we working in opportunities, in cases, accounts, contacts, what's our object? And then 
what's our if statement? What is what is happening that we're solving for? That we're going to automate in action when that criteria is true. Now we can do immediate action. We can do time dependent actions. And sometimes the criteria is complicated, and sometimes the actions that need to happen are complicated. And when that happens, that's when we really can leverage the power of formulas to, to automate our processes. So let's go ahead and jump into writing a formula. Now, you can do some basic, we have, we're going to cover a couple of basic best practices to kind of get your mindset into um, the right place to jump into writing a formula. The things that I like to think about at first would be writing out a sentence of the if-then statement, the process that you're trying to solve for. Writing it out in words uh, helps me. That's, I sit down with a pen and paper and old school and I just write it out. If X, X, X happens and define what's exactly, what information do you need in order to be true for your action to happen? And then what's that action exactly? And just write it out in words. Another thing is you actually have two options to writing formulas. Um, so when you get in and if one of these, you know, if you have complicated process and you're going to use a formula, you can actually use two different ways. You can use the traditional and parentheses or parentheses, or you can use the new and I think improved way of writing a formula, which is the double and percent with um, the which means and, and then the double vertical bar, which means or. And the way, the reason I like this way of writing a formula is because it reads more like my sentence. Because I like to write it out as a sentence, you can kind of plug in your ands and your ors with those double um, ampersands, double vertical bars right into your sentence. That helps you really start to understand how to write a formula without, you know, being a developer, really having to, to spend a lot of time, that which I had to spend a lot of time on with the ands and the ors parentheses. So you want to figure out which one you prefer. The only way to know that is to practice. So we're going to go into some examples. And two of my favorite formulas are text and is changed. So text lets us change, and we're going to look at both of these examples today. Text lets us trans, basically translate a pick list file or a date field to text right in our formula so that we can use it. And is changed lets us reference at the time of save, did a field change from before it went into edit mode, from the last time it was saved. So those are two very powerful formulas that I love to use all over the place. And we can do, again, as we mentioned earlier, we can use formulas in our criteria when we have complicated criteria, so we can throw that criteria in the workflow rule we um, have the actual criteria, or we can actually use it in the action. So the first thing we're going to look at is the first option of putting it into the criteria portion of your process. So for, for this example, we have the and um, example. We, we actually have an and and or mixed in here. So when your users, you're as an awesome admin, you're all around the place, you're talking to your users, you're talking to your stakeholders, and people are always asking you to help them automate their process. So now that you have a framework, you can really start to plug in their words and write out the sentence and start to see where you can put it into your, uh, into the three components. So the first thing is, my manager just came to me, or my stakeholder just came to me and said, Melissa. I really need a new task to get created for my project coordinator when an opportunity is set to close or if the stage changes and the word lost is in the next step somewhere. I'm noticing that my sales team is writing the word lost somewhere in the next step but is not actually changing the stage to lost. So I want my project coordinator to go follow up with these people and with the sales team to, to get more information so that they can help them push these deals to close or to close one. 
or to do something else, maybe do like a postmortem, who knows. So I go, great, okay, let me sit down and figure this out. My three components. First, I know that my stakeholder is talking about the opportunity object. Perfect. What's my evaluation criteria? Well, I know it's complicated, right? Because <laughs> my stakeholder said a lot of things there about when this task needs to get created. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, great. I know I need a formula for my criteria. So let's write this out as a sentence before we even dig into the formula. If the opportunity state is changed to a new value at any time, and either the opportunity stage is equal to closed loss, or next step field contains the word loss. So now that we have this in a sentence, I can start to formulate my formula. Now we have two options like we talked about before. You can figure out which one works best for you. Option one uses the and grouping in parentheses with the or groupings in the parentheses. Think of them as groupings. So you have one big and with your parentheses starting, and then you have that closed parenthesis all the way at the end because it's one big grouping. So this says the stage name is changed, comma, which means and in this because it's in the and grouping. Then you start your or grouping, and we have stage name pick list is closed lock, comma, or, which means or because you're in the or grouping, contains the next step field contains the word lost. You're ending your or grouping, and then you have your and grouping there at the end that we had already had there. So now we have one big and grouping with an or grouping in the middle so that we have an and or for the second piece of the criteria, just like our sentence reads. Now in option two, if you notice, there's not as many parentheses. So the reason that I find this way was easier for me to learn was because I can translate this into a sentence. Think of it this way. Stage name is changed and then we have a paren because we need to always group our or because the system needs to know that those ors go together. So and paren stage name pick list is closed loss or you have those double vertical bars it literally reads as or the next step field contains the word lost. Then you end your parenthesis, your grouping of the or and it reads really streamlined. So two options for the same solution when this criteria is true, if you did this in a workflow as your criteria, then you could put an action to create a new task for the project coordinator to follow up. You can do it exactly the same way in Process Builder or an approval flow criteria, anywhere you put the, the, the formula as the criteria. So let's go on to the next example, which is a simpler example, which is just a straight or statement to really solidify this concept. So our stakeholder came to us and says, hey, I'm really having a trouble, uh, a hard time putting a report together that tells me every time an, a stat, just a one field that tells me uh, an opportunity was just created or the, or the stage field changed. And I just want to see that quick view without looking at all these other fields and all these other date fields that are on the opportunity. Can you help me? And we're like, yes, we can. So let's sit down and write out our three criteria. We know we're talking about opportunity. We write out our evaluation criteria, which we know is a little complicated. We know that's where we're going to put our, our formula. If the opportunity record was just created or any time the opportunity status field changes to a new value, when that's true, then we're going to update a custom date field with today's date. So in the evaluation criteria, option one, we write the formula with a or paren. So you can write it or with the big parens of grouping of is new, which means literally it's is new. It'll go to true if, if it's the first time it's been saved, comma, or the stage name is changed, end. Now in option two, you don't need, basically the difference is you don't need those outside parens. You have is new, uh, the, ver the double verticals, and then stage name is changed. You don't need a grouping, um, it just reads like a sentence. And then in your 
field update, whether you're in process builder, any of uh, workflow, anything, you're going to put your, your formula field update as today with open print, open closed print to capture the date that the, that this criteria was true. And for our third example, we'll move to a demo with Mike. Thanks, Melissa. So I want to go into an example where we're actually going to use um, business criteria and the action is the formula as opposed to the evaluation being the formula. So let me just exit out of my slides here and go over to my demo org really quick. Um, so I'm logged in here to my, my demo org and of course I have lightning enabled so I'm all set and I've got my quarterly chart going. And I recently talked with my sales executive and he said, you know, the salespeople are naming their opportunities, all kinds of stuff, and we don't have a standard naming convention, and we really should implement something so that it's easier for us as executives to read reports and understand what opportunity we're talking about and make it easy for our sales reps to enter opportunities and not have to spend a lot of time training them on just naming a simple opportunity. So we're actually going to use a formula to set that. So to do that, from my home page on the upper right, I'm just going to click on the gear and click on Setup Home. And this takes me to my Lightning Home Setup page. And then the quick find, it's just easy if I just type in the word Builder. Uh, by typing in the search box, I can find all of the builders that I have. So I'm going to use Process Builder to set this one up. So I'm just going to click on Process Builder. And here you can see I had a few processes already set up. And of course, we had one opportunity naming convention process in place. But because the executive wants to make the change, I'm actually going to do a different version of it. So this one's inactive, which means I can go into it and actually walk you through it. And we'll activate this and, and make sure it works according to what the requirements are. So the executive wants us to set up a process where the opportunities are named using the account name, a uh, space, a colon, and another space, or as Melissa reminded me to concatenate this, uh, and then add the opportunity close date. So anytime uh, an opportunity is created, it should be that naming convention. And of course, you know, they, we as an admin sat down thought we could do this through a validation rule. But if the user didn't get the naming convention just right, it could be kind of frustrating. We already have all this data in Salesforce, so let's just have Salesforce automate it for us. So using Process Builder, we're going to start on the opportunity object. And I'm going to start this process when a record is created or edited. And the reason I chose created or edited, obviously for new records, I want this to be enforced. And then looking back as we edit our opportunities, I also want this naming convention applied. Now, one of the really cool features about Process Builder is when I choose a criteria, I actually have the option to just say, you know what, I don't have any criteria. This is going to apply to all opportunities that are created or edited. So I chose the radio button, no criteria, just execute the action, which is really cool. So we have some immediate actions, and that action is to update the opportunity name. So I chose this action, update opti name, just to keep it kind of short and it's going to work on the opportunity. And there's no criteria for this because I just want every opportunity to be updated. And this is where I'm going to use a formula. So for the field, I'm going to choose the name. For the type, the way that I'm going to update this is through a formula. We have other options like strings, reference, global pick list. And here I've started writing this formula, and I just kind of want to walk you through it and rebuild it. So I know writing formulas looks like code. But it's actually not, and it's a good way to understand how code is written in Salesforce by just understanding formulas. So I'm just going to hit enter, and we're just going to build this uh, formula all over again and show you how minimally typing it can be built. So the first thing I need to pull in is the opportunity account name. And to do that, I just click on the magnifying glass for insert field. And I start at the opportunity object, so I need to pull in the go through the account ID, and then when I scroll down, I have the choice of choosing account name. So I'm going to select choose on that. So it looks like my formula is lining up so far. And now, of course, Melissa will remind me, I'm going to add the and ampersand so that I can concatenate this all together. I'm going to choose a quote, 
and to follow our naming conventions, I'm going to hit the space bar, colon, another space bar, and the quotes. And what that little section of, of text did is every time an opportunity is created, Salesforce will insert so far the opportunity, the account name from the opportunity, and a space, semicolon, quotes, or space, colon, space, so that the naming convention is clean. And now what I want to do is add in the close date. So I'm going to add the ampersand sign. And as Melissa showed you earlier, we can actually use functions to change different fields. So opportunity close date is actually stored in Salesforce as a date field. But in order to store this date into our opportunity name, we need to change that to a text field. So to do that, it's very simple. We just click on the magnifying glass for function. And the list of all of our functions comes up. And we can either type in this filtered list, or I'm going to choose text, because I know I'm choosing a text function. And then just type the word text. And when I choose that and insert it, it always inserts it in the wrong place. So we'll just fix that real quick. Okay, so now it's text, and then the, the function is telling me it needs a value in here of what it's actually going to convert. And so we know it's going to convert the opportunity close date. So all I have to do is click on the field magnifying glass and scroll down to close date because I'm already on the opportunity. Choose close date. Select choose. And then our friends around it. Up and print. So now you can see my two formulas match. So that's how easy it was to build that formula. I like building my formulas twice, makes it easy. So I only need it in there once. So I'm just going to click save. And that saves this action. And because this is our new process, we're going to activate it. And we are set. So let's go and try this process out. I'm going to click on my little hamburger here and go to Accounts. And I'm going to choose my Gene Point account. And if I'm a sales rep, I can scroll down. And we're going to create a new opportunity. I just talked to Gene Point. Now, as a sales rep, I don't need to know what the naming conventions are because Process Builder will just use that formula to overwrite it. So. I have no idea how to name my opportunity because I'm a new sales rep. But I do know that the close date is this Friday and with the little red star that's a required field. So I'm in the prospecting stage and we'll say it's worth $5,000. And here's where the magic starts with formulas and process builder. When I click save, process builder saved that opportunity. And it actually renamed it. Here it is. It renamed the opportunity, adding in the account name, the space, semicolon, and then the expected close date. So with that, let me hand it back up to our slide real quick. OK, that was the cool demo. Um, I do want to call out that, of course, you're probably sitting back and thinking, wow, there's a lot of tools in Salesforce, and we do. We have four tools, actually, to automate business process. So I did one demo with Process Builder, which allows you to have multiple if-then statements and, of course, change records, create records, either related or unrelated. You can post to Chatter, and there's a lot of really cool actions with Process Builder. We also have Visual Workflow, which, if you're a little bit more into a developer mindset, gives you a visual canvas that you can drag and drop elements onto. You can add screen elements and decision elements, so it's a little bit more powerful than Process Builder. We have the traditional workflow, which Melissa mentioned earlier in her presentation, which allows for a single if-then statement, um, and you can do things like update a record, send an email alert. And then, of course, we have approvals. So if you ever have records that need to go through an approval process, you can build that in Salesforce. Uh, and those can be standard objects, like opportunities, maybe if they need a certain amount or custom objects, maybe you track time off in your org. So 
Those are the very cool ways that we have to automate processes in Salesforce. Um, and then, of course, I do want to call out, Melissa has some really great resources. Melissa, you have a blog post on writing formulas. And, of course, you can learn more about writing formulas uh, through our formulas and validation badge on Trailhead, of course. And, Melissa, I think you were a part of writing our advanced formulas trail on Trailhead. I was with a huge group of awesome. people. Great. So it looks like we are just close on time, but we have enough time for live Q&A. Uh, Melissa, I have one question for you that I want to start off with. You showed us two different ways uh, to write formulas. The first one was with AND, and the second one was with ORs. Is there any advantage to writing uh, an OR statement using the OR function or the double vertical bar? No, it really just comes down to preference. Uh, when I was getting started, I was really struggling with the traditional style with the parentheses and the and statement. So um, I was realizing I was using a lot of notes and constantly, like, not able to sit down and just write it by myself. And then when I learned the and, the double ampersand with the double verticals, I wrote it, I figured I, I started writing formulas that day myself without using resources. So for me, it just works for my brain. Um, so it's just a preference. Wow. Okay. Um, and we had one question come in. Uh, I'm guessing this is about Process Builder, uh, if it can be done in Classic or uh, in Lightning only. And the cool thing about Process Builder, Process Builder is already in your org, and if you're utilizing our Classic interface, you can absolutely use Process Builder. Uh, and if you're already switched and migrated to our Lightning, uh, then you can use Process Builder as well. So Process Builder works agnostic as to whether you are in Classic or in Lightning. Melissa, we do have one question that came in. So if you have multiple workflows that, that update the same field in different ways, uh, how are they prioritized? Um, and I would... I would specify that by saying maybe that's a case for moving to process builder over workflows. What would you say? Uh, depending on the case um, and the criteria, it, it could make sense to go to process builder, which uh, clearly defines the order for you. So you, it literally goes through, you know, if the first criteria is true, do these, and then it stops the process. It doesn't continue going unless you specifically tell it to. So you have a little bit more control there. Um, my understanding is the workflow rules are kind of, uh, there is no real order to them. They kind of go when they need to go, and um, there's no way to set one to go before another one. So that's why it's really, um, really important. When I used to do, I have like a process where I had like, let's say, 20 workflow rules for one like contract process. Um, it's very important to um, set that order by making sure that your criteria goes in order, if that makes sense. So, you know, always add in that extra thing that X is blank because that field can't be filled in until that process is already over. So then, you know, you can move on to your next one. So you can kind of use criteria um, is the best way to do it to make sure that one can't go at the same time as another, if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, very much makes sense. Um, and then I'll take one last question. So, Melissa, we found out that formulas are text and is changed are your favorites. Um, they're wondering what mine are. Uh, boy, there's so many functions to choose from. I would say the one that I like the most is is blank because then you can check to see if the field is blank regardless of what's in the field. You're just checking to see is this field blank. So I've used that quite a few times uh, to help either set a priority or set an alert because uh, because a user forgot to fill in a field. So with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us. We're right at time. If you have questions, don't forget to join the admin webinar group for more Q&A. Uh, it's bit.ly backslash admin webinar group. And if you're logged in to the Success Community, click on the Collaboration tab and find the group Salesforce Admin Webinar. And with that, thank you for taking time out of your busy Wednesday to join us.